Okay, so another quick three questions for evaluating using laws of exponents. So we'll start here, and we've got a multiplication of two fractions. And one thing that is right off the bat recognizable is that uh, the numerators and denominators don't line up in terms of common bases. So the twos are unfortunately across from each other, and the threes are across from each other. But don't be fooled by that. With multiplication, uh, we're allowed to move things around. If I had 2 times 4, that's 8, but 4 times 2 is also 8. So it does not matter what side each other is on when multiplying. And that actually goes for fractions as well. We can s swap our numerators or denominators. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. So I've got 2 to the 5 divided by 2 to the 4. And all I did there was move the 2 to the 4 over and bring the 3 to the negative 2 over here. And so now I've got uh, everything nicely lined up and we can do our exponent laws for division. So 2 to the 5 over 2 to the 4 is 2 to the 1 and 3 to the negative 1 divided by 3 to the negative 2. You're going to be subtracting and if you need to write it down in an intermediate spot by all means go ahead. So it's negative 1 take away negative 2 and negative and a negative swaps it out so it's negative 1 plus 2, which is positive 1. So we've got 3 to the 1, and 2 times 3 is 6. So that was uh, fairly painless. <clears throat> There's a couple other ways to do it, but essentially that's it. And as always, maybe just double check your work. So we're subtracting exponents here, so we've got 2 to the 1. We are going to subtract here, negative 1. Again, take away negative 2, leaves us with 1. 2 times 3 is 6. So moving on to the next one, uh, they are nicely lined up here, and we don't have anything uh, that's too particularly uh, uh, scary. And the only difference being that we've got a stretched out division line instead of, in the first question, the multiplication was of the fractions themselves. But in fact, again, that that there's they're just trying to trick you with how they're writing that, and this is essentially uh, the same style of question. So we've got 3 to the negative 2 being divided by 3 to the negative 1. And we're going to subtract those exponents and get 3 to the negative 1. And we've got 2 to the negative 3. Take away that, that other 2. And that becomes 2 to the negative 1 as well. And don't forget that this means to reciprocate. So we've got 1 third times one half, which is one sixth. And in the last question, things are not lining up again. So we've got our threes across, and we know that we can turn a four into a two squared, and they're not lining up. But this is where it really is a trick. You cannot uh, take. It's actually not allowed to take that plus area, these, these two pluses here, and move things around. So unlike multiplication, where it's OK to move things on either side uh, around about like I did in, in the first question, unfortunately, these have to stay lined up. <clears throat> because we, it's not multiplication, we're not going to be able to divide across. So can I move the 3 to the negative 1 over here? Absolutely. I can do that. But I cannot split the division sign. That's where the confusion is. So we can still line these up. I didn't change anything numerically by doing this. But I cannot do this division. And I cannot do this division separately. And just to just to kind of prove that point, if this was 2 plus 3 divided by 7 plus 8, I'm not able to say that this is 2 sevenths plus 3 eighths. It doesn't work that way. Because if you recall, when you are adding fractions, you do not add the denominators. And so I would not be able to then write it like this. It just doesn't uh, 
That's that's against the rules. All right, so in that case, we have to go back to the basics and recognize what we have. We've got one third plus one quarter, and that four happens to be to the power of two, divided by one over three to the two plus one over two to the three. And we can turn these into their official numbers if we have to, which we do. So 1 16th. And we've got 1 over 9 plus 1 over 8. And so now we're kind of, we're kind of stuck. We just have uh, f two fractions being divided by two other fractions. And we're going to have to use common denominators in order to do those. So there's not much in the way of exponent laws being used here, um, but recognition of the fact that you couldn't use the exponent laws is key. Let me just pull up a blank slate for us. I'm just going to actually delete some of the previous work. So I'm just going to work on the left hand side now. And essentially what we have is one third plus one sixteenth and that whole statement is being divided by one over nine plus one over eight and so we go back to kind of grade seven eight math we're going to find common denominators unfortunately the common denominator here is 48 which is 3 times 16 so I've got 16 over 48 plus 3 over 48 And the common denominator between the 9 and the 8 is 72. Just multiply your two denominators. So 8 over 72 and 9 over 72. And what we have now, because we're dividing fractions, is we have the multiplication of their reciprocal. Now, believe it or not, we don't actually have to multiply. We don't have to do this huge multiplication of 19 times 72 or 48 times 17 because 48 and 72 are both divisible by 8. Uh, we we've, we've see an 8 here and we see a 16 here. And so now we can start uh, simplifying instead of full out multiplying or full out dividing. So 8 goes into 72 uh, 9 times and 8 goes into 48 six times. So what we really have is 19 over 6 and 72 turns into a 9. And then we will pull our calculators out perhaps to do this work. And so we have 171 over 102 and it's our job now to find out if that reduces further. And if you haven't figured it out yet, it is divisible by 3, and so we get 57 over 34. And then if we wanted to write that as a mixed fraction, we would. I'm going to leave it as is. So that was definitely the more arduous of the three, but not necessarily a difficult uh, problem overall when you start to look at the individual tasks involved. And that's it for that quick and dirty three questions.